Dread grips me as we approach Grofheim. None of us expected to see a city unscathed. But what we find steals the very breath from my lungs. Oh, rip. Daven, thank you so much for that Twitch Prime sub. I really appreciate it. But, ooh, whoa, holy shit. <sighs> that place was rip. Dang. What did I tell you, Rook? The man has a crazed look about him. He stands, axe pointed in your direction, on the other side of a dozen men. Echel, you son of a bitch. Remember what I said. Think carefully about what you want. This is what you get. He walks away, leaving you to deal with his thugs. What? Now we gotta fight? Well, I sure. This sounds like a good fight. Let's do it. Oh, shit. I should have left What's-Her-Butt out. She doesn't want to fight humans. Alette. Ugh. Bloody flail. Mom, welcome back for 27 months, Mom. Thanks for the resub, Mom. Why you gotta be so principled, Alette? Because she's great. It would suck if she wasn't. Oof. Ouch. He can also do that thing that I do. I do not like that, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. You, get fucked. Just in time for the death match? Yeah, apparently. Oh, he's just healing himself. Okay. So, who's going next for them? That guy. And he's probably going to kill him. So, if I take a let, can I do... Go there. And then I can... Attack, but I can only do six damage. I didn't want to do this. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It was, it was. I I fucked up. All right, Alet. I'm sorry. Mm. Oh wow. She didn't want to fight other like humans. And I should have respected that, but instead I did not. Because I forgot. If she gets dead because of me, I'm going to be real upset. Cool. 
Okay, I guess I can step forward. Do some shield damage. I'm never sure what the tactics are in this game. trying to get better, but it's still, like, pretty difficult. Mmm, this one. You playtested a friend's tabletop RPG last night? Everyone plays part of a World War II tank crew? Nice. There we go. Got him. Ow. See if we can get three health damage. No. Nope. Oh. Yeah, got him. Oh. So that'll make it easier on the archers. she can do the one damage she needs to do. Cool. I'm sorry that you killed humans. I know you didn't want to, and I feel really bad. I'm sorry, Let. I mean, she's just gonna have to learn at some point that humans will attack you too, and so you gotta murder them. Maybe? Hate to admit it, Rook, but you're right. We can't stay here. If we're not murdered in our sleep, it's only a matter of time before the dredge find their way in. There's nobody defending these walls. You spot Alette looking at one of the thugs. She cocks her head to the side. Uh, Dad? I think he's still alive. Ivor lifts him to his feet by his tunic. He groans from the pain. This guy again? Why did Ekil try to kill us? He's a damned lunatic. Figure that out yet? Why would Frostveller's chieftain put a madman in charge of his guards? Um, Mom. So this game is called the Banner Saga. It's very basically you are playing um, two different groups of, um, like, what are they called? Um, two different. Uh, groups of people that are trekking across country um, and in this land there was a war a really long time ago where these creatures called the dredge who are basically like giant stone robot guys um, just attacked everyone uh, and the varl who are the ones with horns fought against them before um, and remember them but the humans I think like it's relatively new to them or they didn't have to fight the dredge before but anyway, they're trying to get to someplace that's safe, I think, is the basic uh, thing. That's what he told you. He never put Ekil in charge. As soon as those gates were shut, Ekil walked into the Great Hall and sliced open the chieftain like a narwhal. Saw it myself. Ekil wasn't a captain. Look at him. Ugh, he was playing us. Can't say I'm too surprised. This whole place is a death trap. Where can we go? By now, the dredge have already flooded the south, I'm sure. Wormtoe is the only thing that makes sense across the wastes. I might know someone there who can help us. And the dredge probably won't follow us out over the wastes. They didn't in the Great Wars. Because it's a death sentence? Food's already running low. I know where Ekel keeps his supplies. I'll tell you, if you take me with you. Hmm, what's the catch? No catch. I, j I want out of here as much as you do. Just never had anywhere to go. Hi, Boland. How are you? I'm not the only one. Get the supplies and there are plenty of fighters who are desperate to get out of here. That might solve a few problems. Hmm. It's worth the risk. If nothing else, Ekil's going to feel it when his food suddenly vanishes. What's your name? Onef. 
why do you just want it to know whose face I'm going to break if things go wrong? My weekend's been pretty okay. Enjoying this new game. Okay, let's see. Market-wise, I have a Renown gets one, which isn't a lot. You were used, I'm used to it getting three. Plus one break, plus one will, plus two will. Plus 20 dodge, negative two aggro. People less likely to hit you. We'll do that one and that one. Wait, what? Oh, we don't have sufficient renown. Oops. Okay, well, Onef leads you to an inconspicuous building. This is them, he says to the handful of guards inside who lower their weapons. In a concealed basement, you find an enormous store of food and sundries. Grab what you can, he mutters. Um, I'm gonna make multiple trips because I think that, like, if anything, we'll just get in a fight, which I think I could probably win. Day 69. Nice. Hauling the entire store of supplies out of a basement takes more time than you expected. Each moment you imagine Echel's men rounding the corner. Yells in the distance mark that fear becoming a reality. You get the others out and emerge from the building in time to meet them in battle. That's what I figured. But we got all the supplies, so. Um. Oh, I forgot the item that I bought. And I put a let in the fight again, which he didn't want. Okay. He's shielding, which means not attacking. But also, I don't have much to do. Oh, he resists all of it? Oh, well, that was a waste of willpower. That homecoming video in Twitter is adorable. You mean Buster Real? Buster Real? Do anything? Oh. What's run through? No. Fine. That was a bad decision, but I'll live with it. through Adam's stuff? Do you two ever stream games together? We do! Yeah! We streamed a fair few things together. Um, there's, uh, I'm gonna be put putting our Bloodborne playthrough up on my YouTube pretty soon. Um, we, he has, like, a playlist that is, um, stuff we've done together. Um, And I, I think he's uh, got that on his YouTube. Yeah, it's gonna be going on my um, YouTube. I just, I need to get, I need to get to the point where um, I'm caught up with my editing. No, oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. Good job. 
Ow. Don't fucking hit me. Yeah, I am. I'm trying to, I'm trying to grow my YouTube. I'm trying to get more stuff on there. I want to, like, I definitely want it to be, um, like, get a different audience and, like, have a different format because I know YouTube is better for, like, watching, um, stuff you missed than Twitch is. Um, Twitch's, like, VOD system isn't the greatest. So, I hope that y'all are enjoying that and taking advantage of it. Also, hi, YouTube. <laughs> I didn't use the special even, but he's still pretty cool. I keep doing that to her. Oh, we're two steps away from 460, y'all. Everyone's injured. Before long, the last of the stores is cleaned out. As you're turning to leave, a valuable looking necklace with a deep green stone catches your eye and you decide to keep it for yourself. Anef leads you and his trusted fighters out of the city before more men show up. Bodies and dredge fill the fields in front of Frostfeller. You consider the best way to leave. Oh yeah, um, I think I actually have another one to fill in, but um, here I'll, uh, this is my YouTube goals. Um, I'm almost done. I didn't expect my YouTube to grow as quickly as it has, so this is for the whole year. So I might just, like, have to make notes of, like, higher than that. This is my Twitter goals. I kind of made these really big, but we're almost halfway, like, halfway done with my goals for the year, and the month, the year is halfway through. So, like, I don't know. I think I've been doing a pretty good job. And then these are my Instagram goals. And I, that one I actually need to color in because I did it. I'm there. Um, and we're almost halfway done with that too, which is really cool. Um, Instagram is a lot harder to grow. And obviously it's like this is 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And then it's 0.1 um, here and it grows by 0.2 there. And then when it gets to five, it grows by 0.5. So we probably won't fill out this one just because Instagram is really hard to grow. But, I mean, I think I've been doing a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah, I like my journal. I like it a lot. Um, I think I've been doing a really good job. Okay. So, I have this, which plus two aggro, two strength resist. Um, do I have anybody who can equip this? Not yet. This is 20% dodge, which can go on a third person with three. What's he wearing right now? How do I get like items off of people? He's wearing plus 15% dodge, so we can give him 20%. 
but that's percent of his strength, which is 10. I mean, that's still pretty good. And then this is native to aggro, so let's go ahead and put that on her so she won't get attacked as much. And this you have to be level 2 for, so let's put it on that guy, I guess. Yeah, I try to set realistic goals. Thank you, Chris. Your journal dis dissolved pretty quick into just lists of stuff to do. I mean, that's what a bullet journal is at its core. Outside the walls, things are a mess. Dredger everywhere. Fortunately, they're going around the hill on which Frostfeller sits, heading south, and show little interest in following you across in as you cross into the wastes. You're finally free of Frostfeller, but find yourself facing new problems. You hope that whoever Iver, Iver knows at Wormtoe is going to help. Yeah, yeah, it totally is, Boland. I agree. It's very sizable. Okay, we have 29 days of supplies. The sound of a skirmish alerts you to Varl, surrounded by half a dozen armed fighters. One man spots you and shouts, Leave us to our business! This Varl killed my father without reason. The Varl is about to respond when the man attacks. The giant swats the blade aside easily and silently watches for the next assault. Let's hear what the Varl has to say. The Varl shrugs as if unconcerned, saying this one's father and I had a business deal. He lied. Now he's dead. Lies? Shouts the man. You murdered him over a lie, you coward! The men wildly attack the Varl, who deflects them well enough, but you're uncertain of how long he can keep it up. Hmm. I think we should let them settle their own shit. You quickly decide this minor scuffle between a man and Varl is not worth the caravan's precious time and none of your business. Besides, your warriors return with you, some more reluctantly than others. Good night, Boris. Sleep well, enjoy your book. The caravan is buzzing with worry. In the distance, someone has spotted a large number of dark figures following you. The dredge, cries one woman, but something about it tells you they don't quite look like dredge. Gods be damned chokes Onef, standing on one of the carts to get a better view. Worse than Dredge. That's Ekil. The news spreads through the clansmen like wildfire. Ekil? Why would he... starts Odd Life. Unless he's after you, Onef. He's insane, interjects Onef, and unpredictable. That's a good number of fighters with him. Your mind races, considering what to do. Let's try to peacefully work things out. Onef and your allies leave the caravan at a determined pace. There doesn't need to be bloodshed, you shout as he approaches. Why, Rook, my good friend, he replies, throwing his axe to the ground. We came to parley, not kill. Oh, they came to talk. Why would I believe a word you say? Rook, we're good friends, what happened? You tried to kill us. Just go back to Frostfiller and leave us alone. Ah, Rook, it's your pretty girl. I'm glad nothing happened to her. With the dredge, I mean. My friends, how could I forget everything you've done for me? Broke into my city, took my warriors, took my food, then killed some people so you could take more food. That was a nice touch. Took one of my best men. How are you, Onef? Do they treat you well? Shove it up your ass, Ekil. If you came out here to kill me, let's get it over with. Nothing like that. You must think you know me. Or people like me. What Onef tell you? I'm crazy? I haven't survived because I'm crazy. I did what had to be done to make it in Frostfeller. The only mistake I made was you. What kind of man are you, Brooke? You look like an average man to me. A man worried about his daughter, maybe. Just making his way. But then look behind you. How many people is that? They follow you. Fight for you. Why? What kind of man are you? I protect my kin. It's more than that, isn't it? You think everyone was born to lead? Make hard decisions? Who do these people think you are? 
You saved them. You're a hero. Maybe that's more important than who you really are. What's your point, Echo? I'm your prisoner, Rook. Bind my hands. Buddha, welcome back for 28 months in a row. Thank you so much. Buddha, you're the best. Frost Veller is done. I can't survive there thanks to you, my good friends. You may not have cut my throat, but you sentenced us to death. I don't believe that's who you are. Is this some kind of apology? You can't trust me. I know that. Take me and my men as prisoners, if that's what it takes. Echo looks down at the ground, and the words slowly come slowly to him. I'm not above begging. Uh, hey, Onef. What's up? I'd be a hypocrite if I told you to leave them. I don't know, Rook. You don't know me. How could you trust my word any more than his? I'm behind whatever decision you make. Uh, take them as prisoners. Listen, Echo, we'll keep you alive, but look at one man, woman, or child the wrong way, and every last one of you gets cut down on the spot. You understand? I may be reckless, but I pay my debts. These people are right to follow you, Rook. You're a good man. You have each man's hands bound tightly and their bodies checked for weapons, making sure no mistakes are made. Things are certainly starting to feel complicated. Damn fucking straight. I think we need to camp. Take it easy for a while. People are noticing. Oh, they've noticed, have they? We're on the edge of dying daily, and you want me to take it easy. Gods, I should be plowing twice as many fields, you understand? Don't get us thrown out of this caravan, Mogan. It's not just you who suffers. Right, so you get married, have kids. Now I'm supposed to settle down too, yeah? What happened to... The two brothers clam up as you approach. That's right. I've got the kid to take care of. Cool your head, Mogan. Hogan departs, leaving Mogan. Looking awkward. Rook, what brings you around? Ah, uh, sorry, it's none of my business. No, but it's no secret. I like women, Rook. They like me. They like the scar. Feh, <laughs> forget it. Listen, all this, all this death. Every night, half the caravan cries itself to sleep. Pathetic. Come on, Rook, be honest. This is good living. Half the world just tilling soil till they keel over. What kind of life is that? We're lucky. You could go your whole life with no goals, no purpose, nothing to fight against but boredom and hunger. I'm glad for all of this. I'm not sure I... I get what you're saying. Sure. Yeah. Look at it like this. We're fighting to the death almost every day. Yeah? You can curl up in a little ball of fear. You can go hide in the woods, eating nuts and appreciating leaves or some nonsense. Or you can enjoy the struggle. I know which one I pick. Anyway, just so you know... I'd never go for a let, promise you that. Or odd life. All yours. Appreciated, Mogan. Uh, <laughs> okay. Alright, so we gotta rest, because people are injured. But now we're okay. So we can skedaddle. What are those crows circling? I didn't... I didn't see this. Was this there? Did I miss it in the background? The picture... Like, the godstone or whatever? You find a surprising number of people camped out at the godstone. They've been here quite a while, ever since the sun stopped. Apparently they think Radomir, Radomir, the sun god, has come back and they're worshipping him despite the bleak environment. They welcome the caravan, mingling and swapping stories with the others while you rest. They have almost nothing of value to trade, but their leader approaches and offers to let you join in their tribute. Uh, what does this tribute involve? Golenfir. Says, one says, showing you a golden liquid in a silver bowl. He places some on his chest, which almost sounds like it's sizzling, and explains through clenched teeth it's a gift from the sun god, an oil that burns like the sun and lets them see things clearly. Uh, anyone in the caravan feel like burning themselves? Not surprisingly, you find no takers. You wonder how devoted you have to be to go in for it yourself. 
Nobody can really agree on what Rathermere looked like, as fond as he was of his own isolation. He never directly contacted humanity. Most think he was a serpent that lived in the sun, and it's not uncommon to hear speak of seeing the tail of a great creature slipping through the thin clouds on a sunny day. Radomir was always one of the lucky gods, the kind who people thanked for good weather, healthy livestock, and a good harvest. Despite all that, the biggest mystery has always been how his godstone came to be found at the bottom of a dried out lake. After some rest, you continue on. The sun god worshippers are keen to stay, so you pack your things and return to the road. I kind of like these godstones, but I'm not quite sure what it is they contribute to the story other than like a place to rest and also sometimes having items. 